Let's thank God for Shanae Tucker, guys. Let's thank God for the demonstration of the power of God that moves through her and has influenced the whole world. International influence for years upon years. And here she is standing before the Lord, standing in a fullness of time, because what just happened in a demonstration all today is happening in every one of our lives. And Shanae, you've not seen anything yet. It is the truth. When you know someone so closely, because we really are sisters, hallelujah. We, I tell her, I say, we're sisters from a different mother than I'm going to get with her mother. And I'm like, yeah, you could be my mama too. Hallelujah. I want you to start praying. Come on, raise your expectation here. God has something for us. And he has something that he is opening up in Shanae. And there's a season that is opening up. There's a time that's opening up. I'm hearing even now the clock strike midnight because the song that is a new morning. It's a new morning. It's a new morning now. It's a new morning now. He I can see Okoro Hoshabete. He anadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadad
Father, I thank you, Father, for continuing to open up her understanding. Yeah. Yes. Visitations, 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 your understanding, your capacity to hear in the realm of the spirit, to hear and to see. Father, I thank you for stirring up that seer, not just a seeing anointing, but, but just an ability to be and to hang out in a realm. Harabosende, to hang out in the realm, to hang out in the realm of the spirit and to hear as never before. Wow. As never before. Thank you. Just keep praying in the spirit. Yes, and Jesus. Yes. Come on, we're just hanging out. Come on, just hang here for just a bit. Let's just go into a realm. Come on, there are realms. Lord, you're opening up realm. The word is realms. 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 Ah, hey. Realms of the spirit. In the spirit. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day realms realms things are opening up there are realms that some have not been permitted some have not been permitted to enter realms but the Lord is giving entrance he's giving permission I'm just hearing this fresh didn't have any of this he's giving permission and that is really for you Carrie I hear that for you He's given permission. There's some places you could not have entered. Nothing to do with you. Nothing to do with how hard you prayed. Permission had not been granted. For it was not time. Even as the Lord said to Daniel, seal it up. Until the time of the end. Come on. Spirit is touching you right now. Cheryl. Touching you. Just lift your hands up. Ramabasete. Ramabasete. Permission being granted, given to you for something. Jan, Holy Spirit touching you. If you're feeling any kind of oppression or depression, lift your hands up right now and shake that off. Just shake it off. Just shake it off. Ramapa, come on, that's leaving right now. That's a spirit. That is a spirit. Get off in Jesus' name. Loose her and let her go. That is a spirit that is not coming from your heart. That is not coming from you. Listen, that's not you. That's a spirit. Get it off of yourself. Shake that off. That's not Jesus. You're right where you need to be. You're right where you need to be. You're accepted in the beloved. Just going to hang out a few more minutes. Kaysen, you are so on time, my friend. You're so on time. <laughs> You're so on time. You're so on time. Rebebe Shende, you're on time. You keep hearing and listening because you are on time, brother. You are on time. Rebebe Shende, you're like in a training program. You're like in a young school of the prophets program. And the Lord is training you. You're like in that Daniel, um, Meshach, and Abednego company. You're like in that group. And there's a, there's a, a group of people God's calling you to run with. Wow. Hallelujah. Come on, just stay with me. And as I release the word today, don't leave me by myself. Come on. Let's bring forth the word. That's the way it works in an apostolic prophetic community. The one who's bringing the word is never alone, but everybody's pulling 
on Holy Spirit saying, bring the word. We are all responsible for the delivery of the word. It is never the one in the front. But everyone's pulling on him and it's dropping on the ones who happen to be in the front. And nobody leaves empty. And the message will change in midstream because of what you're pulling on. It'll change in midstream because of what you're asking for in real time. It'll change and shift. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you for your word today. Thank you that there's something on the table for everyone. And if, if the bowl is passed and it's just not for you, you're like, well, Hope they like that as it gets to the end of the table. That wasn't for me. But there's something on the table for everyone. Hallelujah. Coming on up higher. These guys just said, we just step up higher. Come on into that promotion. Amen, <laughs> Sasha, Tony. Well, I, I feel like... Um, I just, you know, there's always different ways you could go. And, and I, as I was praying into the word today, I mean, there's really this whole week praying and asking the Lord, what shall I share? And I just had such a scattering. I was like, Lord, what, what? And I just feel like that if I were to give a title for the word, it's really like wisdom keys for, for 2023. So I'm just going to drop some things to kind of serve up a bunch of stuff on the table and hey, just take what's yours. But it's just some wisdom keys that I feel like the Lord, and really, usually what I'm feeding is what I'm eating myself. You know, you're just kind of getting what's on my own table, and I'm just kind of putting it in the to-go box and bringing it here. <laughs> so I want to start by reading some scripture. And um, if you have your Bible or your electronic device, uh, follow along. Um, I really, really believe in the Word of God. I think it's good when you're even looking at it yourself. Because, see, we're, we're under revelation, right, under a spirit of revelation. So what, when, you're, when you're under that anointing, you'll see things that are just popping up because it's just for you. So, you know, just stay, stay that way and, and uh, just receive. But, um, so, yeah, wisdom keys for 2023. And um, I feel like I'm going to be talking, I'm going to be reading out of Matthew chapter 6 verses 24 through 34 I'll jump for just a second into Matthew 7 7 through 8 and then really the bulk of where I'm going to be is a first Kings chapter 17 and also we'll just segue a little bit into first Kings 19 1 through 9 so I'll say it again Matthew 6 23 through 20 and 30 through 34 Matthew 7 7 through 8 and First Kings chapter 17 and First Kings and uh, First Kings chapter 19, one through nine. So lots of scripture this morning. No apologies. All right. Yeah, no apologies at all. We can hang with the hearing the word. Um, and I feel like really what we're, what I wanted to do is really talk about um, this whole idea of provision in this season. And um, the, the first scripture that was coming to mind for me, among many, was uh, really seek ye first the kingdom of God. And as I was pondering, seek ye, seek ye first, or seek first the kingdom, and that has been coming out a lot in our house um, in various ways, in various messages. I think uh, Sherry even really parked us there for a bit and really broke that open for us some weeks ago. But I was hearing the Lord when I was saying, yeah, seek first the kingdom. I heard him say, see first the kingdom. See first the kingdom. In other words, I want you to see, Shanae, I'm shifting the way that you see your life, and I want you to see first the kingdom in everything you do, from the smallest detail. I want you to see first the kingdom. And I think that means, as I'm hearing it even now, it's that as I'm seeing and I'm walking about in life, I'm literally seeing through a kingdom lens. Yeah. And I'm actually, the Lord's highlighting people. He's highlighting situations. So maybe before when I'm driving in traffic, and I think I'm going to be late, and I'm frustrated or feeling, why is that big truck in front of me right now? 
right? My natural sense would be, Lord, move that truck out of my way. Help me get to where I'm getting in on time. But maybe if I'm seeing first the kingdom, maybe in that moment I'm able to see or sense the Lord saying, I'm holding you up. I'm delaying your schedule. Or maybe I'm in line and maybe I'm in the bank, maybe I'm in the grocery store and I've got two items, but the person in front of me has 5,000 items, okay? <laughs> and I'm thinking, what in the world? And I would like that person, I'd like to go to the next line, or maybe if I'm looking through my natural lens, I would be frustrated and I'd be tapping my feet and looking at my cell phone and finding distractions. But if I see first the kingdom, maybe I'll know to turn around and that I'm being delayed because the person behind me yeah. waiting needs a word yeah. that I need to engage with them. You hear me? So maybe that's where I need to be. Maybe if I, I wake up in the morning and I'm feeling overwhelmed or I'm feeling, you know, whatever, maybe I'd start to say, you know, what's, what's wrong with me today? What did, Lord, did I do something wrong, whatever? And I start becoming introspective. But maybe if I can shift to see first the kingdom, maybe I'm going to go, Lord, I'm sensing what is this? And maybe he says, you're picking up intercession for someone. That's not even, that's not even you. And he might say, pause, Shanae. I want you to pause. You're, you're okay. Don't worry. You're, you're, I, know, I know you think you're late, but you're not late in kingdom time you see what I'm saying and I feel like he's really working on me I'm just I could just sit back and send you home and just run back and forth and preach to myself sit down and then read oh <laughs> just do that because it really is a word for me so see first the kingdom does that land for you so right now we're going to just ask him about that come on Lord we're asking because see we, we, we got to move differently and 2023 we've got to truly do this kingdom thing and it can't just be what we thought we've got to see first the kingdom so lord we're asking that you anoint our eyes right now because there are realms in the spirit that we've never tapped into there are hearing realms where we hear things we've never heard before our senses being heightened to smell realms to smell oh that's dark that's unclean I, I can smell it that's unclean you go to touch someone's hand and you feel ooh there's something going on here realms realms Lord, I just release an activation right now for that sensitivity to fall upon us. I just decree a shift over all of us. Anybody that wants to go there, I just decree a shift that we're walking into a heightened level of sensitivity. And we're, at whatever level you've been, you're just going to your next, Mary Beth, because you do that. But you're even going even to a higher because there is no ceiling. There's no ceiling on the realms of revelation in the spirit. You're watching from home or days after this broadcast. That anointing is fresh as you're hearing it right now because you're hearing it in eternity time. So Matthew, I'm gonna start with Matthew chapter 6, 24, and I'm gonna read it out of the Amplified. Matthew 6, starting with verse 24. <clears throat> okay. I'm starting with 24, for, starting with 24 for a reason. And no one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will stand by and be devoted to the one and despise and be against the other. You cannot serve God in mammon, or which is deceitful riches, money, possessions, or whatever is trusted in. 
Therefore, I tell you, stop being perpetually uneasy, anxious, and worried about your life. What you shall eat or what you shall drink or about your body, what you shall put on. Is not life greater in quality than food and the body far above and more excellent than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father keeps feeding them. Are you not worth much more than they? And who of you, by worrying and being anxious, can add one unit of measure to his stature or to the span of his life? And why should you be anxious about clothes? Consider the lilies of the field and learn thoroughly how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon, in all of his magnificence, his excellence, his dignity and grace, was not arrayed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is alive and green and tomorrow tossed into the furnace, will he not much more surely clothe you, O you of little faith? Therefore, do not worry and be not anxious, saying, where are we going to eat? What are we going to eat? What are we going to have to drink? Or what are we, where, what are we going to have to wear? For the Gentiles, the heathen, wish for and crave and diligently seek all these things. And your heavenly Father knows well that you need them all. But seek, aim at, and strive after, first of all, his kingdom and righteousness. And I'm adding, see the kingdom, which is his way of doing and being right. And then all these things taken together will be given to you besides so do not worry or be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will have worries and anxieties of its own. Sufficient for every day is its own trouble. That is so good, isn't it? It just rings. And I want to say a little bit about um, these wisdom keys, and you can number them as you hear them, but uh, I think there's just several things. <clears throat> the first I think that he's really talking about is, is provision. And I want to just begin with a little story. When I was, excuse me, when I was teaching as a professor at ORU, and um, I was in that position, and I really knew much earlier before I left that it was, it was really needing to end. It was nothing to do with ORU. It was a great place to work, wonderful people, loved the school. But at my time, and what I needed to do with the lifespan that I had was not going to be there. And so um, I really honestly, if I'm just honest, I really probably could have left earlier but I will tell you and, and I was saying well Lord I'm just waiting on you help me to hear and I think I kind of had already not think I, I knew I had already heard but the thing that kept me there longer was the provision I mean if I'm you know I was kind of saying well I'm just waiting on God I just want to hear and want to be sure confirmation you know all those things but if we boil it down to the scum on the pan and really just look at it <laughs> what it was was I'm scared I'm just scared because, you know, I'm not 20 or 30. Stop there, you know. <laughs> and I, you know, and getting a check and having insurance, all those things, it's, it's comforting. I'm just going to, it's just real, isn't it? And it was really scary for me at a latter season in my life to leave a great job and go into private practice. As many of you know, I'm a therapist and I'm also a do ministry. And so I, I do a hybrid of both. Sometimes, some seasons I'm doing, it seems like more than the other, but really my basic tent making thing is I'm a therapist and I do a Christian counselor. So thank you, beloved Anthony. I love Anthony and Lori. And so, um, but it was really scary. And so I remember, I might have told you guys a story before if some of you haven't heard the story, but I remember saying, well, Lord, they gave me this, they gave me that, they gave me this. And I was listing all the benefits of ORU. And I said, they even gave me a turkey at Christmas. <laughs> <clears throat> and I heard the Holy Spirit say, because before I was having this dialogue with him, he said, he said, how much will it, he was, he was talking to me like, like someone who was offering a position. He said, how much, what will it take for you to come work for me? That was his question. And I was like, well, Lord, oh, are you gives me this, 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 even a turkey for Christmas? And he said, I'll give you a turkey. <clears throat> this is, I'm, he's exactly what he said. It's real. It is. Yeah. 
Absolutely, Sasha. So anyway, so I finally, you know, through much confirmation, seeking counsel, that I did make the shift and did that several years ago. Now, but um, it was funny because the first year that I went into private practice, which is a real scary thing, you're building it, it's a business. And um, the first year, I literally made maybe just a little bit more than I did at ORU. First time, first time business, and usually with a business, a new business, it can take three years or at least three to five is what the average would say. And I was making enough. And then at this funny because um, then somebody um, offered me it wasn't a turkey they offered me their thank their Christmas ham that they had that they had gotten from their job and they said you, would you by any chance like this and I went huh. one a turkey but it was a ham and I, it was kind of like the lawyer was like ha ha you know <laughs> yes I can even I can get you the turkey or the ham or whatever and I think I did get a turkey later. So I want to, um, I now want to take us into just a little bit of a journey into the, the a, a season in the life of Elijah. I want us to read together. And I want to pull out some wisdom keys that I think really do speak prophetically to where we are in 2023, what we need to know um, as we're in this, this new year, technically on the Gregorian calendar. We know that we already transitioned and crossed over um, last year in, in the Hebrew calendar. So I'm going now to um, 1 Kings chapter 17. And guys, I'm going to read. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and read 17, the whole thing. So stay with me, okay? So, and I'm going to read it. Um, I'm going to read it out of the um, Amplified. 17, beginning at verse 1. Elijah the Tishbite of the temporary residence of, Gile of um, Gilead said to Ahab, as the Lord um, of God, God of Israel lives, therefore whom I stand, there shall not be dew or rain these years, but according to my word. And the word of the Lord came to him, saying, Go from here and turn east and hide yourself by the brook Cherith, east of the Jordan. And you shall drink of the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed you there. So he did according to the word of the Lord, and he went and dwelt by the brook Cherith, east of Jordan. And the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning, and bread and flesh in the evening, and he drank of the brook. Make a note in your head about that. Ravens are feeding him twice a day. He's drinking from a brook. Well, after a while, the brook dried up because there was no rain in the land. There's famine in the land, right? Because he, the prophet prophesies there's not coming any rain. So he's living now under the very conditions that he prophesied. And his brook dries up park that car and think of that <clears throat> and the word of the lord came to him arise and go to zarephath am i pronouncing that right sherry which belongs to sidon thank you and dwell there behold i've commanded a widow there to provide for you make note of that he goes to zarephath and the lord says i have commanded a widow there to provide for you and so he rose and he went to zarephath and when he came to the gate of the city behold a widow was there gathering sticks and he called to her hey bring me a little water in a vessel that I may drink and as she was going to get it he called to her and said bring me a morsel of bread in your hand and she said as the Lord your God lives I have not a loaf baked but only a handful of meal in the jar and a little oil in the bottle and see I am gathering two sticks so I can go in and bake it for me and my son that we can eat it and die Elijah said to her, fear not, go, do as you've said, but make me a little cake of it first and bring it to me and afterwards prepare some for yourself and your son. For thus says the Lord God of Israel, the jar of meal shall not waste away or the bottle of oil fail until the day that the Lord says rain on the earth. Yeah. And she did as Elijah said. And she and her and, and she and he and her household ate for many days. So this is not just he apparently just she and her son. She has a household. So there's maybe some who knows, maybe they're servants, I don't know. But they're eating for many days. Verse sixteen. The jar of meal was not spent, nor did the bottle of oil fail according to the word which the Lord spoke through Elijah. And after these things the son of the woman, the mistress of the house, became sick, and his sickness was so severe that there was no breath left in him. 
And she said to Elijah, what have you done? What have you against me, O man of God? Have you come to me to call my sin to remembrance and to slay my son? He said to her, give me your son. And he took him from her bosom and carried him up into the chamber where he stayed and laid him upon his own bed. So note that he's now living with her, right? Because he's taking the child upstairs, so it's got to be his room. He's now in her house, living there. And Elijah cried to the Lord and said, O Lord my God, have you brought further calamity upon the widow with whom I sojourn by slaying her son? And he stretched himself upon the child three times and cried to the Lord and said, O Lord my God, I pray you, let this child's soul come back to him. And the Lord heard the voice of Elijah and the soul of the child came back into him again and he revived. Wow. As I was reading that days ago, I literally like her. It was like I was imagining or hearing. However, the Elijah's voice entering heaven. I mean, the child's already in heaven and his voice is interrupting conversations and the Lord hears, the Lord heard the voice of Elijah. Come on. The voice, the Lord heard his voice and said, you got to go back. And his, his spirit returns to his body. I think it was interesting that there was worship going on about resurrection. I think that's in here for a reason. That... Um, there's a prophetic anointing. There's an anointing, an ability to change times and seasons and to literally call something that was dead back into life. And when we pray under that unction, the Lord literally hears our voice. And, and it changes things. I really believe that's for us. Some of you, it's especially landing on you because that is really where you're going. And I just want you to he let your spirit hear it. You already opened and got activated. And you're saying, yes, Lord. I'm, I'm in agreement with that. Wow. Notice also, too, that she's blaming God for this. And he's kind of almost thinking, Lord, have you done this? You know? So even he's kind of scratching his head a little bit. Well, he stretches himself upon the child. And it says, he cries to the Lord. And he said, let his soul come back. And the Lord heard his voice. And then in verse 23, and Elijah took the child and brought him and brought him down out of the chamber into the lower part of the house. Because the Lord had to say, the soul of the child came back into him. He revived. He brings him down and he gave him to his mother. And Elijah said, see, your son is alive. Yeah. And the woman said to Elijah, by this, I know that you are a man of God, a prophet of God. And the word of the Lord is in your mouth. All right, so you're, you're hearing that story. You're hearing these. I want you to be thinking about, as I've just read that part of his life, these different transition seasons he's moving through, okay? He starts out in the story in 17. He, he's activated by hearing the voice of the Lord. The Lord says, go, you know, you're going to go park yourself by the brook of Cherith, east of the Jordan. You're going to be provided for by drinking from a brook. And I've, I've commanded the, ro the raven to feed you. Brook dries up. The, the, the next command comes. I've commanded a widow to provide for you. He goes there. And there's provision. Then there's also resurrection in the story. There's miracles. Okay. Just kind of setting the stage here for some wisdom keys. All right. Now I'm going to read for you so that I can just talk fluidly once we all have the same story in mind. Now I'm going to 1 Kings chapter 19. And of course, the setup on the story is that Elijah has just had the big showdown with the prophets of Baal. God wins. And then Jezebiah, Jezebel gets word of it. She's now angry, and she's now got, a, um, got hit men after him. And he's running for his life. He's now, we find him in the wilderness. So I'm going to start with um, <clears throat> verse 2, well, verse 1. Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done and how he had slain all the prophets of Baal with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah saying, So let the gods do to me, and more also, if I do not make your life as the life of one of them by this time tomorrow. 
And he was afraid and arose and went through his life and came and came to Beersheba of Judah over 80 miles out of Jezebel's realm and left his servant there. But he went himself a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a lone broom or juniper tree and asked that he might die. He said, it is enough. Like, I'm done. Oh, Lord, take away my life for I'm no better than my father's. Basically, he's clinically depressed. OK, he's kind of suicidal. And he lay under a he lay under the broom or juniper tree. Behold, an angel touched him and said to him, "Arise and eat." And he looked, and behold, he looks now. And he's seeing. There's a cake ba a cake baked on the coals and a bottle of water at his head. And he ate and drank and lay down again. The angel of the Lord came a second time and touched him and said, "Arise and eat, for the journey is too great for you." So he arose and ate and drank, and he went into the he went in the strength of that food 40 days and 40 nights to Mount Horeb, the Mount of God. And then he comes into the cave and then he has a dialogue conversation with God. So notice after that meal, he literally goes into kind of pretty much like an involuntary fast, right? Because he's not eating after he's, he, that, whatever he got from the impartation was enough to sustain him. So he's now really fasting 40 days is what it looks like to me. Okay, so what are some of the wisdom keys that we can pull out of this as we're now in this new year. <clears throat> so first of all, I want to say that if we remember going back to 17 with um, Elisha, that he starts out, the Lord tells him to go to a place, and the very place he goes, um, well, he's, first of all, he's, he's, he's at uh, the brook where the Lord tells him to go, and he's being, the Lord is feeding him, but he's using the environment to feed him. I mean, he's literally being fed, I mean, by nature. It's, that's really beautiful, isn't it? I mean, think about it. You wake up and there's, there's um, it says, yeah, there's, there's bread and there's, what is it, bread and water. Is that what it said? Meat. Bread, meat, yeah. So I'm thinking, is he like going to some king's table and like lifting it, you know? <laughs> or is, he just, is it just appearing? And you don't know how he did it, but the ravens did it. But they're, he's being fed supernaturally through the elements. And I think that sometimes, um, this is maybe a key for some who are here, we can sometimes um, really think that our own working and effort is what's bringing us money and bringing us provision. But I want to say to you that however it comes, it's always God. Let's just settle that, right? Whether it's ORU or it's me working, it's always God. Because I told you that I made almost, almost to within, you know, hundred bucks or something like that of what I made at ORU when I changed in a year time amazing. the Lord it was amazing the Lord provided because he was showing me look what will it take for you to come work for me I want you to be freed up and flexible so that you can do what I want you to do because I need you not under a system that has obviously an agenda because you're there to serve the goal mission of the, of the university but in this season I need you freed up to be able to do what I want you to do. And so I need you to come work for me, but I'm, but I'm working for myself. No, you're working for me. Because I am the one that's bringing the provision, however it comes. So then these ravens, and I want to tell you a story. I love stories. This, um, I mean, the Lord can use nature to get a point across. And I was, for many years, some of you know, I, I led a discipleship program, which I still do periodically. And uh, this one woman wanted her husband to get into this, the men's version of the program. It was a, it's a 14 week discipleship program. He was, um, she was living with her boyfriend at the time. She wasn't really walking with the Lord, but she uh, had said that she, um, what she wanted, she was really going after God, but he wasn't, they were living together, I think. So anyway, she wanted him to go to the program. He said, I know I'm not going. She was kind of, you know, imploring him to go. He said, okay. They were going to have um, like a kind of an introductory meeting about the program, and, and she wanted him to go to that. <clears throat> and he said, um, okay, I'm going hunting, you know, this whatever, when he was going. He said, if I get a buck, is that what you get a buck? Is that what they are? If I get a buck on my hunting trip, I will go to the class. And she was like, you know. <laughs> so she's praying. <clears throat> and so... This is the, and I heard the story because I later met him. So the story ends well. He goes, how many of you are hunters out there? Any hunters out there that know these kind of things? Okay. So he literally said that he's up in his, I guess, what the, the tree stands you're in or whatever. 
got his all camouflage on. It's early in the morning. He's hunkered down for a long wait. He said within less, it might have been three minutes after he got there. He said, out comes this big buck, steps out from the, wherever it was, the bush, steps out, looks at him, and then turns this way and poses. He stepped out and it just looked, and then it turned like firing, like, you wanna get me here? Is that, can, can you reach me, you know? In position. <laughs> Because the Lord commands nature. He commands nature to do his bidding. And that little sweet buck gave up its life because the Lord had need of him or her. Is that a her? Thank you. Thank you. A boy deer. <laughs> That's the story. Okay. And he goes to the class because he gave his word. He gets radically saved and he ends up being a leader in the program. The Lord is our provision. He uses the environment around wherever we are to do his bidding. So it's important that we're where we're supposed to be and that we follow his leading. But the provision should, the fear of provision should not be the thing that makes us do or not do a certain thing. I'm not saying we don't use wisdom, right? Do your homework. Do you do the do? You know, don't walk out of here and then put my name on it and do something dumb, right? If you do, if you do, don't mention my name. I'm just simply telling you. I'm just simply like leave me out of it. I'm just simply saying that the Lord really um, does not want us to be. That the, the fear cannot be the driver, because the provision, however it comes, is going to be coming from the source. That's a wisdom key as you're going into this year. If the Lord is calling you to make a shift or calling you to remain put, provision and the fear of it cannot be your reason. Um, I also want to say a little bit of a wisdom key for you this year. Um, yeah, so number, point number one, Elijah goes to the brook. He's fed by the ravens because God is his source. God commands the natural world to provide for him. Wisdom key to number two. Later in the story, we know that the brook dries up. The very thing that God told him to do now is gone because he's, he's living in an Ahab Jezebelian culture, right? And there's famine in the land. So he's being affected by the very things that are happening in the culture. The brook dries up. And I want to say in that that sometimes the brook drying up, it can be the spiritual brook, the emotional brook. You're like, oh, man, I'm just dying here man, I'm sitting in this church. Maybe you're even watching online and you're in a, a church situation. You're like, I am dying here, but I think I should just stay and be faithful. <laughs> and sometimes the brook is drying up because the Lord says, we're done. But Lord, you called me here. Past tense, called you there. Sometimes the brook drying up is that we've ended a season, so now I'm stirring up intercession for you to inquire about the next thing. So the brook dries up, and then, then he does hear from the Lord. And the Lord says, Arise, go to Zarephath, which belongs to, to Sidon, and dwell there. I'm changing your location, because I've commanded a widow to go there and provide for you. So he rose, it says, and he goes. And when he gets there... She greets him at the gate and says, oh, I've been waiting for you. So glad you're here. No. Okay. But Lord, you commanded the widow. Well, she hadn't gotten the text yet, right? Or she hadn't gotten the email or the whatever. So sometimes the Lord calls us to go to a place. And it doesn't look seem like the environment's waiting and excited about us coming. But does that mean that God didn't say you're supposed to go there? The Lord had already commanded her, but she had that word hadn't she hadn't caught up with that word yet. It hadn't caught up with her, but it was already out there because the word does not return void. So then she does end up, you know, he tells her, hey, go make yourself some, you know, bring me a little bit. And finally, she does all that. And then the miracle happens. But again, sometimes the Lord, but he had to kind of work that word, didn't he? Yeah. 
He had to work that word. He had to work with her, work with her. So we can't just think that sometimes when God says something to us, it should just be automatic. Sometimes you just have to be confident that you heard the Lord and be patient because the ground conditions are not yet acclimated to your coming. Right? Yeah, so sometimes the ground, the, the people, I remember once being in an airplane and we were trying to land for, oh, we were circling for a long time and we couldn't land and we were all just, we were going for landing. He pilot would speed and pull us back up. Three times he tried to land, she tried to land. And I remember when we finally landed, we were like all clapping, you know, and running to get off the plane. But, um, <laughs> like literally, but um, it wasn't that, we weren't, there wasn't time to go home. The conditions on the ground, it was a lot of wind and rain. The conditions on the ground were not ready for us. So it wasn't safe to land. But we were all packed and ready to go. So sometimes we have to work the word, like work with it. That means we trust what the Lord has said. We continue to remain faithful. And we're patient with those around us. We're not telling them, well, the Lord told me, you're supposed to give me money, you know? Right? Right? <laughs> The Lord told me, you're my wife, you know, <laughs> you're my husband. Any of you heard those kind of stories? Well, sometimes you might know that someone is your spouse to be, or you might, young guys take notes back there in the future, you know, but you don't tell, tell her that or him that. You just simply wait and let the word work itself out in the situation. Okay, so just park that car too and let, let that be something that's, if that's needed for, as a wisdom key for you. All right, and then um, I also want to say as a part of that story, another part of wisdom key from the story of, of Elijah and the widow is that um, she provides for him. So he obviously moves into her upper room. So they become family in a sense. And then later her son dies. Now she's thinking you're the cause of this. There's some conflict. Um, he then raises her son back to life. And my thinking is that her son probably already had death working in him. He's probably already, or maybe he was, got sick later. The prophet did not do that. Or maybe there was an attack or something. But good thing he was there. Because what if he'd not been there? He was able to bring the son back to life through the word of the Lord, the son lives. And so I want to say a little bit right now from a wisdom key from this part of the story about the importance of alignment. Alignment. You have got to be with the right people in this season. It is, it's, it, that's been a word for a couple years now about alignment, but I want to tell you and underscore it. It is very important that you are aligned with the right people. And I mean, I'm talking about your fellowship, your people that you hang with, that you run with, because there are some things that you're going to need. The, the, the anointing is going to be on them to help bring that forth. And by being part of a prophetic company or people that really can hear the Lord when you can't, and you're flipping out, you know, yeah. they can calmly help get you back in clarity and help you get your breakthrough. A personal story I want to share um, is that um, in my own personal season, I, um, about over two years now ago, was in a just a, a season, a lot of changes in my life, and just always so much going on, you know, between home and trying to take care of things and family and all that. And so um, I'd been living in an old house for quite a while that um, I knew I needed to leave, but there was so much going on in my world that I thought, how can I even begin to think about moving and get all this done, plus working full time, et cetera. And then um, Prophet Steve Polk, <laughs> my, also my friend and dear brother, just came to me. I probably told you the story already, did I, about him coming to me about the house? No? OK. OK. Yes, he came to me and just said, um, one day said, you know, I just was thinking about you, Shanae, and, and the Lord, I just thought the Lord said to me, you need to sell your home <clears throat> and sell your mother's home who was getting older. And I was doing a lot of care between two homes, caring for my mom, and it was really stressing me and was very it was challenging because she was needing more and more of my help, which was my joy to do, but it was just needing more help. So he said, you need to really pray about... Um, you need to really pray about selling her home and your home and buying one together, moving in together. And I was like, whoa. I thought about it kind of, but then I had not really prayed into it. And so I said, okay, I will pray into it because I really do trust 
Um, I've seen his life. It's, he's got a real proven track record. And I said, okay, I'll pray into it. And it didn't take long. Within maybe a day or so, I was like, that is what I need to do. So I began the long process of, you know, it was a long process of, you know, downsizing a, a home of a person who'd been living for years and had done any of that and selling my home and doing all that. It was really, really, it was an arduous process and journey. But, but here's the thing that I want to say. This is about this thing of alignment. Because it, it, it took a while to get everything in line to ready to, to sell. And the Lord knows that I need time. So I think you guys have heard one of my messages where I talked about how in my house the theme is, does anybody really know what time it is? Because I have clocks set ahead <laughs> to help me get where I need to be, <laughs> to trick myself, you know. <laughs> Even though I know that they're wrong, it just somehow works. Kind of. So anyway. So the Lord gives Steve this word really early. But it still takes me a while to get it. Months. And I, by the time I sell the home, I hit the peak of the market. When the market was just crazy. My house sold and my mom's house sold for way more. I didn't do any fix up. And I sold them as is. And we ended up buying and building a new home. And we literally hit it in the peak. We couldn't, the, the realtor said, you could not have hit it. And I'm saying this story to you to say that had I not been in alignment with a prophetic community, when I couldn't hear, I would have, I would have missed the window and would have possibly still been where I was or in something not nearly as nice. But because I was in a prophetic community, that reciprocal benefit of being in a prophetic community, you give to them, they give to you. And so he, his word enabled me to be in time. Before I knew that we didn't even know the market was going to go crazy. This word came way ahead of time before we knew anything about the crazy market. So I'm saying that it's imperative that you are not even just sitting in a prophetic house, but that you really have a relationship with people who hear the Lord, and you hear the Lord for them as well. So the reciprocal benefits of being properly aligned. She benefited because she was, had a prophet in her, in her circle who was able to help bring resurrection back, who brought resurrection back, resurrection back to her son who had died. And then I want to say... Um, also, let's see what's what is a wisdom key here. Yeah. Then I'm going to move to the final example from his life. Elisha, after the great showdown with the prophets of Baal, we know the story. I've preached on this before, but I'm going to go a different angle here. He's weary in body. He, you know, he's now he's suicidal, right? Suicidal ideation. He's thinking about dying, wants to die, asking permission to go early. And um, under the broom tree and. Uh, the Lord, of course, you know, hears his, his groaning and all that. And he doesn't wake up to the Lord rebuking him. He wakes up to basically, I call it, he's getting breakfast in bed. Yeah. Right? It says that angels, if you look over at, at uh, 1 Kings chapter 19, he's prayed, Lord, I want to die. I'm kind of done. And it says that, um, you know, he's, he's praying, take my life. And it says that, um, behold, an angel touched him and said to him, arise and eat. He looked and behold, there was a cake. I'm in verse 6 of 19, 1 Kings 19. He looked and behold, there was a cake baked on the coals and a bottle of water at his head. And he ate and drank and lay down again. Then the angel comes a second time and touches him and says, come on, arise, eat. The journey's too great for you. And so I call it how the Lord gave him breakfast in bed, you know. You know, the Lord provides for him, and he doesn't rebuke him and tell him, you know, right. you should be, look at, look at what I just did. He's, he's giving him really some Shabbat. He's giving him rest because he's tired. And I want to say two wisdom keys from this. And one is that, and I think one of the last messages I preached last year was on Shabbat, was on rest, Sabbath rest. One of the greatest strategies of warfare we're going to need in this season is moving from rest is doing battle coming coming from a place of rest. Rest, 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 and returning and rest. Going out and then coming back from rest, going out from a place of rest. And so I wanna again encourage, if you, ha if you didn't hear the message I spoke some weeks, a 
couple months ago on Sabbath, then you can go to the archives and find it. But it's really important to, to find a rhythm of, of rest where you have that Sabbath day, Sabbath time, as best as you know how to rest because you're going to hear a lot better when you're rested. Some things you can rebuke the devil all along all, and you're not going to hear. You're just tired. It's not that deep. You're tired and you just need to sleep. You're feeling out of sorts. You don't feel like you're yourself. You're grouchy. You just might be tired. A little dehydrated, too. <laughs> Have some water. <laughs> okay? And rest. <laughs> Sometimes it's, that's as deep as it gets, right? So the importance of Sabbath, the word Sabbath or Shabbat means to stop. And I think it means to pay attention to your own heart, to the people around you, to notice but you have to have built-in times of Sabbath. And in fact, we here at Kingdom Reign, you know, we, we love to look at the Jewish calendar and to really observe and celebrate the feast because they're all divine stopping points. Yeah. The Lord has built that into the system. He built Sabbath into the system because why? He knew that we would need regularly scheduled times to stop and rest and breathe. And when we take those deep breaths, putting the therapist hat on for a second, the nervous system comes down. That fight or flight system that's, that's activated, that's got you all in, I'm in danger mode, comes to a place of rest. When you're in that agitated state of being anxious, you're the part of your brain that is the amygdala, that is the, that, that kind of that fight or flight system that gets you all emotional. And then the logical part of your brain, when you're in that activated state, the, the logical part of your brain goes offline. So you can't make good decisions. You can't hear well because your body thinks you're in danger. So it's paying attention to the, the lights, the bells going off that are saying, you're in danger, you're in danger. And it's got your heart beating fast and you're all worked up. Does that make sense? So when you can rest and your, your body can come into that Shabbat, that rest, that Sabbath, you can hear the Lord, you can hear your own heart much better. So, and you save time because you get more done. So I want to encourage you as a wisdom key, look at your calendars and plan in advance. When am I going to stop and rest? Not, don't think that you're going to accidentally do it because most of us won't. Life will happen and, and there'll be something that will be screaming for your attention. So always. So this is going to be really important for warfare is to have those regular stopping times. And I also want to say lastly a word about the angelic realm. I really, really believe, in fact, I know that this is going to, we're in a season now where there is a lot of angelic activity. And the Lord wants us to really become aware. That's why he's saying, see first the kingdom. Because I believe that we're going to see and if we're going so fast that we're not seeing, we're going to miss it. Man, there was an angel there to help us with something. I think that we're supposed to really pray. In fact, pray into that. Make that a part of your prayer dialogue with the Lord this early month, part of the year. Lord, I want you to help me to be sensitive to angelic presence, the presence of angels. Because sometimes they're there to help. Sometimes they're there to speak a warning. And we need to really become so sensitive to their help because um, the Lord sent those angels to help him. So think about in reviewing, and I'm going to say one last thing about angels before we wrap up, but think the, about those three areas of provision in his life. The first time he's fed by the natural world, by the ravens. Then the Lord commands a widow to feed him. And then thirdly, he's fed by angels, the bread of heaven. Three different kinds of provision, but they were all God right? God was the source of all the provision, but it came different ways. And, and God didn't provide the same way in every season. Amen. So just because God's been providing you by sending checks in the mail in one season, another season you may have to ask, <laughs> can I have some bread? Can you help me? Will you pray for me? No, it's just me and Jesus, man. Just me and Jesus. No. In this season, you may need to pick up your phone and say, look, I'm not well. Can you pray for me now? So 
the provision of God, whether it's physical provision, emotional provision, spiritual support, it looks different in every season. So don't get locked into a religious mode of how the Lord deals with you because the strategy was changing, wasn't it? And that latter season was supernatural. It was just he's sleeping under an open heaven and angels are descending and providing for him. I believe that that's the realm. That's, that realm is opening up even more and that we're going to be seeing angelic help. Some of you will have visitations. The, I believe the, the, the dream realm, the, the night shift, where God is speaking on the night shift for many of us, is opening up. So I think we need to really be aware of our sleep hygiene. Because that will interrupt, you know, television, media, you know, make sure that you have an environment that enables you to have good sleep. I'm working on that on my own life. That's, that's a Shanae to-do list. And um, have a, a journal or something by your bed or either your phone where you can record because when that revelation comes, you really have really a few seconds to kind of get it because it will go quickly. So expect visitation in the night and be ready to document and record so you can steward what the Lord is saying. I want to wrap by sharing one last story and about the Lord's goodness and provision and angels literally on the ground helping us. Um, I was uh, had gone to see my sister who lives in Georgia and I had to go from Warner Robins, Georgia to driving to the Atlanta airport. Help me, Father. I had to drive through traffic to get there. It was rainy and all that and, and anyone driven in Atlanta traffic, it's just challenging. Lori knows nothing about that at all. And was driving, neither does Anthony. And, um, and so I had my brother-in-law told me, said, you can leave in plenty of time. And I thought I had plenty of time, but the traffic was crazy. And we had to catch a flight. I had my mom um, who, who could you know, walk OK, but could not carry bags. And people, we had bags, <laughs> like a lot of suitcases, OK? Why do two women need that much? Please don't go there. Just know that we had a lot of bags. And the challenge was that I, when we traveled on the way there, I had gotten assistance for us. Yeah, you can get assistance to take the, to, to, to help you, take you to the baggage, take us to our rental car. But I had to return the rental car, and then I had to get all of our bags in a, you know, somehow get all of our bags from the car, park the car to the, um, the, the, the tram or the bus. And so there was no one to help me coming back, and I'm running late. So I'm praying all the way to the airport saying, Lord, when we get there, how am I going to get maybe like seven bags? And my mother needed some help with them walking, and I needed a wheelchair to help her. Thinking, Lord, how am I going to do it? And um, I, just, I, don't, I just didn't have time to even know how I was going to do it. I get to the car rental place, and it's like it's a ghost town. There's nobody there. You have to kind of park and leave your car, right, and drop your keys off. And um, I get there, and there's like nobody. It's a huge parking area. There's no one in the parking lot. And I've got all these bags to unload out of the car, get them. You got to go up, you know, walk clear across the parking lot, go up el escalator, then, you know, get to the bus or whatever. It's horrible. And I said, Lord, I need your help. What am I going to do? I parked the car. As I'm parking the car, clear across the car rental car car rental place parking lot comes like here I am parking here and like diag diagonally like clear maybe like a football length it looked like or half the football length away I see a person coming with a cart there's nobody else in the parking lot and the person has their head down with like a hood or something and they're coming my direction and they keep coming and I'm just watching this and they park a cart somewhere about where Mary Frances is, and they turn and walk away. And I go and grab the cart. I put all thousand bags that we have onto the cart. And I say, Mom, hold on to this. I'm going to just, you just, we're going to push together. And we run and we make it to the airport. I know that was an angel. And I couldn't even see the face. They just had it back, and they didn't even say anything to me. They just parked it, and then they just walked off, and I looked back, and they were gone. I kid you not. 
I know that was the presence of an angel that was there to help me, beloved. I believe that we're, there's help for us. Our provision is coming from the Lord, whether it's financial, whether it's practical, whether it's encouragement, whether it's resurrection life, whatever we need in 2023, we've got to see first the kingdom of God in every area of our life. We've got to see, we've got to wake up every day saying, Lord, let me see the kingdom today. Who am I to talk to? Where's provision coming from? Lord, what do I need to know today? We're asking open questions, not Lord, are you gonna do this, that, no. It's like, what do I need to know today? Because sometimes we don't even know the question. We need him to give us the question. So Father, in Jesus' name, we say help us to see first the kingdom of God this year, to recognize you, to see you as our source, that money will never be our problem. Money and provision is not, our, not for kingdom citizens. Money is not your problem or the lack of. You have an unlimited supply. And when the river dries or the brook dries up, there is a river whose streams do not dry up. And that river, that source is the one feeding every supply system in your life. And in mind you, thank you, Lord, for your provision all throughout this year. We're not moved by what we hear on the news, but we're locked into an eternal source, which is who you are. And you're not in time, locked in time, and neither are we. And we thank you, Jesus, receive the glory in our lives this year. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we just thank you for the sabbatical season that you've had Shanae in, in this last season. And that, Lord, that even as there's still a, a lap or two left of that, that new definition is coming into this next season. Even today, Lord, she was hearing and seeing pieces and parts of what her next season on the other side of this sabbatical season that she's been in. We were talking about this yesterday. The land may be resting, but that doesn't mean you're not in motion. Doesn't mean you're inactive. Doesn't mean you're just stuck or stopped. So even, even while the land is resting, talking about your productivity for the next season, there's still a lot of things going on behind the scenes. Money is not the problem, it's also not the answer. Our provision is tied to him. And I, I think I'm looking at a group of people who have already been shifted to the God's my source uh, train, correct? We, do, we don't get thrilled when our ship comes in and we're not heartbroken when it sails back out because we know at the end of the day, the one who's bringing the ships in has got us in his mind amen lord i thank you for this new year this new season lord that our provision has already been ordained would everybody stand up with me our provision has